Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show how we can create such a dynamic chart where the user can actually control what data or what measure or KPI is being plotted on this chart. So you can see that I can toggle between sales and production and then the chart will update to represent the chosen KPI or measure. And I'm going to show you how you can do it with two different measures but you can extend this approach to any number of measures. Now let's get started. So this is the data set that I'm going to use for this demo where I have the year and then the quarter, number of cars produced by Tesla every quarter and number of cars sold by Tesla every quarter. In your case, your data could be any other measure and uh, any number of columns, it's fine. You start with your data set first is to convert this data set into a table. So I'm just going to click on any cell inside this table data and press Control T and hit OK. Now we have converted this into a table. And so you can see here the table name. I'm just going to name it T underscore data. Hit Enter. So now we have this table. Next, we have to create the list of measures or KPIs. Right. So in my case, I'm just going to use production and sales are the two measures that I have. And so I've put this into a simple table again. Press Control T, hit OK. So now this table, I'm going to call it T underscore MEAS for T table of measures. Before we create the chart itself, we're going to create our helper table which will have all the necessary calculations. If, because we're going to create a column chart, we will need x-axis and y-axis. So I'm creating a calculation for x-axis first. And I'm going to use one of the newer functions in Excel, which is available in the newer versions of Excel. This is a dynamic array function, unique. And I'm going to choose my year column comma, I'm going to just do false, false. Then I need to calculate the y-axis, which is going to be on the chart. This needs to be dynamic. In our dynamic chart, the x-axis will remain the same, but the y-axis, which is representing the measure or the KPI, needs to be dynamic. So before doing that, I'm going to store in, you can do it in any cell, I'm going to do it in this cell where I'm going to say calculated measure name. And what is the calculated measure name? So whatever the user is choosing, right, as the measure that they want to see on the chart, I want to make sure I capture and store it in one place. So I'm going to use this here. So I'm going to call it, let's say, for now, let, let me just type in production. Okay. And let me just put it in a different color so we know which cell it is. And I'm just going to name the cell as C underscore M-E-A-S. Okay, so hit enter. So now I can write my formula to be dynamic. So if C underscore M-E-S equals sales, then sum up the year column wherever there is uh, year of 2015 in this case and I'm going to put a hash at the end of this. This is important because this is a dynamic array that we are referring to so make sure you put the hash and then you do a comma and now what are we summing up? This is the sales so I'm going to choose my sales column. Now if it is not sales what do you want to count or sum in your case, if you have, let's say, five measures, then you will have nested ifs, like multiple ifs. So let me show you the nested ifs. So if I want to do MES equals production, then sum if go to the year column, use the criteria 2015, put a hash, comma, and then sum up the production column values. Okay, so this is how you can do a nested if, depending on how many different measures you may have, you can now create as many nested ifs as possible and then close all the parentheses. So I'm gonna do here is if it's production, 
we calculate this. If not, what do you want to do? So let's say the user doesn't choose any any of these valid values. If it's blank, what do you want to do? You can either make it blank or you can use a default. So I'm going to use the default as sales, right? So even if the user doesn't choose one of these two values, I'm going to by default use sales. Now I'm going to close and I need to also close the first parenthesis. So I'm going to close it again, hit enter. So now what we have done is we have created a dynamic y-axis value calculation where if instead of production, if I type in sales, I now have the values being automatically calculated. Now it's time to create the chart. So I'm going to go and create a 2D column chart with no data at this point, but I'm going to connect this to this is the series name. You would want to choose this sales or whatever the measure name is. And then for the series values, I'm going to choose the y-axis values. Hit OK. And now in the x-axis values or the horizontal axis labels, I'm going to hit edit. I will choose the year. So then I will hit again. OK. OK. So now we have a column chart or a vertical bar chart, which is dynamic, meaning I can change this to production. And now you will see that the chart changes. So I can add labels so we can see how it looks. And if I change it to sales, the numbers will change to sales. We do have a dynamic chart, but it's not fully dynamic. What I mean by that is if I add another year at the bottom here to say 2022 in my table, you will see that my chart doesn't update. Only the x-axis and the calculations update, yes, but the chart doesn't seem to pick it up. And we want to address this because we want our solution to be fully dynamic. So I'm going to take back the row for now and let's change our chart data. In order to do so, we are going to create named ranges. So if you go to formulas, name manager, you can actually create name ranges. So I'm going to hit new and I'm going to call this as x underscore axis. And what do I want my x axis values to be? Uh, my it is going to be a dynamic array starting from this cell. And I'm going to put hash because it's a dynamic array. If I don't put the hash, it won't work. So make sure that we put the hash. And now same approach, we will do a y underscore axis. And these named range, names that we give to the named ranges, it can be anything that of your choice. I'm just calling it x axis and y axis to be pretty straightforward and basic. But you can call it differently also. I'm going to choose this y axis value and then put a hash so that it will be dynamic. So I'm going to hit OK. Now we have created the named ranges, but they're not connected to the chart yet. So that's the next step. Right click, select data. Here, if I go back to my y-axis values, instead of this fixed set of cells, make sure that you leave the exclamation mark there, delete everything else, type in y underscore axis because that's the name of the named range we created. And similarly, on the horizontal axis labels, go back, remove the fixed set of value range of cells, and then replace it with x underscore axis. Hit OK. Hit OK. So now we do have a dynamic, truly dynamic chart. So let's see, test it. 2022. And I'm just going to add some random numbers. 200,000 to 50,000. So now you'll see that the 2022 year is now showing up on the report on the chart and I can hit change this to production and it'll say 200,000. And so this is getting picked up. The same thing should be true if I delete some years. So I'm just going to randomly right click delete rows. Now you'll see that the chart also removed the other years 
the calculations don't have them everything is fully fully dynamic so i'm going to undo so we can have more data and um, so now we have this chart which is fully dynamic and you can change the measure and it'll automatically update now for the last part we need to make sure that this can be controlled by the user in a more um, effective or visually appealing way so i'm going to move this chart now into a separate sheet because we don't necessarily want our end users to see all of the calculations and everything i'm going to cut the chart and i'm going to paste it in a brand new sheet great now with this how do we make sure that there is a slicer to control the choice of the measure or the kpi in order to do so first click on this measures table that we created then let's do a insert pivot table and choose um, somewhere in in this table in this sheet itself a place i'm going to choose this and hit remember it's p3 hit okay so p3 is where the table is and make sure that we select the measures that's the only column we have so we have selected it and now it has landed in this place great now we can close this one we want to create a slicer on this so I'm going to choose slicer and then I'm going to click on measures okay so now we have a slicer and this slicer when you click on one thing it'll you'll see that this table pivot table is getting selected right so if you selected whatever value you selected it's going to be in cell p4 and so without getting too fancy and complicated the simplest approach would be what we already have this cell where the calculated measure name is i'm just going to do an equals in put a formula in there put equals and say equal p4 hit it and then now what happens is whenever we click on our measure slicer you will see that the pivot table updates and because of the pivot table updates the calculated measure name will update and because of that the y-axis calculation will also update so you will see that the numbers change great so now let's take the slicer cut it and take it back into our chart sheet so now we have a slicer and if you want it if you have a lot of measures and if you want it to be vertical that's okay you can um, leave it like this with a lot of different measures in my case i only have two so i'm gonna see if i can do it horizontally so i will resize it and i can put it anywhere here and if i don't want my measure header so i'll just remove it and there you go so now you actually have a working slicer which we have to test if it'll actually update the chart and now it's sales it's production and the title is kind of along the way uh, i'm not going to focus on formatting in this video because of the goal of this is to say how you can create a slicer controlled chart to change the measure or the kpi that you're actually plotting on a column chart you can change this chart type to a line because i'm using year um, it would be okay the point is to say similar approach can be taken to create other types of charts also where the series data has to be dynamic so i'm going to undo leave it like this and now you have a front end user facing sheet which has the dynamic interactive chart but then all the other calculations and stuff are in the other sheet so i would recommend hiding the other sheet so the user doesn't have to see it and you can now build this along with other visuals in, a, in an interactive dashboard or a report for your end user using this technique. Thank you very much for watching.